All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about molarity. So molarity is a measure of concentration. So what concentration is in general is just how much solute do we have in a solution based on a certain amount of solvent. So basically how much stuff have we mixed in to this solvent to make this solution. So if we have, if we take the salt water example again, we could say, Basically, if we have a salt water solution, we want to know how concentrated is it, how dense are the solute particles uh, compared to how much solvent we have. So if we have, let's say, maybe a few particles dispersed in this, in this solvent, we would have a, a low concentration solution. There would be not a lot of stuff mixed into this solvent to make the solution. Whereas if we put a bunch more particles in here, then we would have a much higher concentrated solution we would have a lot more stuff mixed into the solvent to make the solution so the concentration is basically how much solute we have mixed into the solvent so the most common unit for concentration is molarity so what molarity is is how many moles we have of the solute per liter of solution so this is the molarity formula here it's just right on your reference tables on the back page so you don't even have to memorize it uh, so it's again molarity equals moles of solute per or over liters of solution. So this is another formula where those of you who like this triangle, uh, we can use this again because we have uh, a single number equals a fraction. Any, any equation that's formatted like this, we can use this triangle for. So if we're trying to solve for, let's say, uh, moles, we just cover up moles and then we do moles times liters. If we're trying to solve for, let's say, liters, we would cover up liters and do moles over molarity. So this, this triangle could work for those of you who don't like doing the math, uh, but if you're fine with solving this equation, just go ahead and do it that way. So we're going to try out some examples here. What is the molarity of a solution formed when 2.5 moles of NaCl are dissolved into 8 liters of water. So the solute here is NaCl, because that's what we're mixing in, and then water is the solvent, because that's what's being mixed into, what, what the liquid is that we're using as the base for our solution. So the molarity formula again, molarity is abbreviated as M, that equals moles over liters. So if we plug in, we have all the information here. We have 2.5 moles of our solute, so molarity equals 2.5 moles over our solvent, which is 8 liters of solution total. So we just divide this out, and 2.5 divided by 8 would give you a molarity here of uh, about 0 0.31. So to calculate molarity, we're just plugging into this formula right here with the information that we have from the question. So next next example here, we have how many moles of KOH must be dissolved into 3.9 liters of water in order to form a 1.8 molar solution. So this time we have the molarity, the concentration of the solution, as well as how many, how many liters of water we have here. So again, the formula molarity equals moles over liters. So we can plug in the information we have here. We have the molarity is 1.8, so 1.8 equals, we're trying to solve for how many moles here. So moles is our unknown, and that's specifically moles of KOH per liters of solution, 3.9 liters. So to solve for the moles of KOH here, we're just gonna multiply the 3.9 by the 1.8, and that will give us uh, seven moles of KOH is needed to make a solution of this concentration. So a quick note here, one assumption that we make with this with this volume here, it says we, we have 3.9 liters of water. Really in the molarity formula, this is liters of solution. And then on top, it's moles of solute. So the assumption that we're making is that the, the solute particles that we're mixing in, that they're not contributing any appreciable amount to this volume. So the, the volume that we initially have of the solvent, that's going to be the same volume that we're going to have for the solution. We're assuming that these particles are so small compared to the volume of the solution that they're not going to contribute any volume 
Um, realistically, that's usually a pretty accurate assumption to make. If you're mixing in a very high concentration, it might alter the volume slightly, so you might want to uh, check your volume of your solution at the end. But for practical purpose here, purposes here, we can just assume that these aren't going to have any volume, the particles aren't. So we come up with 7 moles of KOH here, again, just plugging into this molarity formula. So you just have to know all the parts. Molarity is the concentration, the moles is how much solute we're mixing in, and the liters is the volume of the solution. So we got a Regents question here. Uh, what is the molarity of 1.5 liters of an aqueous solution that contains 52 grams of lithium fluoride? So here we're talking about grams. So the, the key with the molarity formula is that it's moles over liters. So right here we need moles, but we have grams. So we have to go from grams to moles here. So they were nice enough to give us the gram formula mass here, which is 26 grams per mole for lithium fluoride. So we're trying to find the molarity here, right? So we got to use this molarity formula. So the first step, if we're trying to find molarity, we have to have moles and liters. We have the liters here of the solution, but we don't have moles. So that's the first step here is to find moles. So remember, the formula for moles is moles equals mass over molecular or molar mass. So in this case, we're just going to plug in here. To find the moles, we're going to do moles equals the mass, which is 52 grams, that's how much we actually have, over the molar mass is 26 grams per mole. So when we divide this out, we get 2 moles of lithium fluoride. So now we're ready to plug this number into the molarity formula. So if we calculate the molarity here, we have molarity equals 2 moles over 1.5 liters. So just dividing that out, we'd get a molarity of 1.3 molar here. All right, so if you have grams, when you want to use the molarity formula, we need moles here. This is very important. We have to have moles on the top of this formula. Never plug grams into the molarity formula. It has to be moles. So the first step when you're given grams is to convert those grams to moles and then plug that mole number into the molarity formula. All right, so last one here. How many grams of potassium bromide must be dissolved into 450 milliliters of water to make a 0.75 molar solution? So the first thing we can do here is figure out how many moles we need, because in the molarity formula we have again molarity equals moles over liters. We, can, we, we have enough information here, we have the liters, 450 milliliters, and the molarity, 0.75 molar. So one trick here is this is in milliliters. So in the molarity formula, it has to be liters. The, vo the unit for the volume of molarity always has to be liters. So if you have milliliters, we have to just convert that to liters. So this would be 0.45 liters. So then we can plug both of these numbers into the molarity formula. We have our molarity of 0.75 molar equals moles over 0.45 liters. So then we just multiply the 0.45 and the 0.75, and that'll give us 0.45. 338 moles of KBr that would be needed to form this solution. So once we have the number of moles that we need, we have to just convert that to grams at the end because that's what we're asked for here. How many grams of KBr? So to go from moles to mass, remember we use the gram formula mass. So the mass of uh, potassium is 39.1 and the mass of bromine is 79.9. So if we add those up, that'll give us a total mass of 119 grams. So this is our grams per mole. This is our molar mass of potassium bromide. So we do moles equals mass over molecular mass again. And we have how many moles we need, which is 0.338. We're looking for our mass. And our molecular mass that we found was 119 grams per mole. So to solve for mass here, we just multiply these two together, and we get a mass of about uh, 40.2 grams here. So this is the mass of potassium bromide that we would need to mix into this 450 milliliters of water in order to make a solution that was 0.75 molar. 
All right, so I hope this video was helpful on calculating molarity. Uh, if you have any questions, just try and work back through the examples again on your own. Thank you.